happening, everybody? I decided to stream some more while I'm here because I have some time. So I lied to you all and I said I wasn't going to stream this week. This will be the last stream until the weekend, though, of next weekend. Oh. California is good. I'm dream living the, the dream in California here. Uh, I am using our Wi-Fi here, so if you get a couple of drop frames here, if we get any serious lag, let me know. But it looks like our, our bit rate is hanging in there. So we've got a decisive game, game five between Team Order 66 and Team CFIS. Uh, C uh, Order 66, I believe, is the, uh, the home team for week two here. So this is a winner takes the week game, big one. Salvage mission, Sevwall of course bringing first order, and then Charles bringing resistance here. So I'm gonna open up the betting now, and I'll break down the list for you guys. Josh, it's been a while, man. I haven't seen you in a while. Hopefully you're doing okay, dude. Miss you. All right. So on the left we've got with the resistance here representing Team CFIS, the Core Confederacy of Independent Systems run by team captain andrew block we've got lulo with heroic marksmanship and shield upgrade we've got kazuda we've got kaz the kazmanian devil with heroic with the uh, r1 j5 bucket uh, astromech we've got cloaking device advanced slam targeting computer and kaz's fireball title and we got zay versio with heroic m9 g8 for those re-rolls uh Foils and jamming beam, of course. Vanessa's got those foils, got heroic, got barrage rockets because Vanessa likes to shoot out the back. You can shoot munitions, torps out the back. R4 astromech as well, and jamming beam. We'll probably never get that, see that get used, and that's okay. It's free. And then rounding out the list, the heavy hitter. We've got Finn with marksmanship, heroic, automated target priority, and perceptive co pilot. A little bit of a different build on Finn, but he still has his heroic, he still has his perceptive co pilot. So, still doing the things that he likes to do and then the right side the best salvage faction in the game because of these cheap and effective hard-hitting pieces representing team order 66 run by team captain andrew older we've got sevwall playing fo here leading off we got commander malaris with magpul's warheads really good for salvage lieutenant gaelic with proud tradition biohex secret codes and tractor beam Borch, aka DT798, with crack shot and advanced optics. We've got Scorch with crack shot and advanced optics. We've got Captain Phasma with proud tradition, fire control system, pattern analyzer, and special forces gunner. And then Backdraft with proud tradition, pattern analyzer, and special forces gunner. So, t uh, Order 66, pretty stacked team. They're, uh, they, they, they narrowly beat us, the Tinder Gods, in week one by just a point in game five. So let's see if they can go 2-0 and here, pull ahead with a nice early juicy lead in the league. Again, betting is open. And believe it or not, guys, my brother let me borrow his webcam. So here I am in all my glory. This is not certainly not the setup that you guys are used to me having. I don't have any Lego behind me. I don't have the same camera. But I got a light here, I've got the webcam, and I have my headphones, so it's enough. It's enough. So. I'll be here in the background. I'll try not to switch over here unless we got a really slow planning phase or something. Um, but yeah, so hello everybody. Handsome alert, I know. Yeah, I'm hanging in there. Back to the game. So we are getting set up still. Go to the overhead view. Finn has been placed. And next it will be Zay. I need to get a tissue. My allergies are killing me. So I'm going to step away just for a quick second while the betting is open, while the players are getting set up. Get your bets in. We only got a few bets in yesterday. Matt Carey and Charlie Sherman's incredibly close game. That was a crazy comeback by Matt. You should check out that game. We only got a few bets in for that, so y'all need to do better. BRB, enjoy the music.
All right, Josh and Chris, Michael betting on his team. We got some bets in. Let's take a look at the split so far. All right, we got three bets in so far. I think I'm going to put a bet on Charles. Charles, notable player and uh, community leader in the X-Wing community. Good dude, really good player. Got two good players here. This is going to be a good matchup here. I, I think overall, first glance, you would probably take FO, but there is a decent amount of firepower, sneaky firepower on the resistance side. And some potential, maybe, initiative killing. Lulo has that potential. Finn can be a good finisher. But those Magpulse Warheads are going to be something to deal with because that's going to knock off the crate if it goes through. What's up, Michael? How are you? So... After, after this game, um, the captain of CFIS, uh, Andrew, and I are going to do our pairings for week three on the stream. So we'll have a little bonus activity, however you want to call it, uh, once this is over. So uh, stick around if you have a couple minutes, if you want to see what that's like. It's not too fascinating, but we thought, why not? So we'll... Uh, once this wraps up, we'll jump in and quickly pair. He is the gonna be the home team. So, oops, don't go anywhere. You can't leave. Happy, hope you're all having a happy Sunday and happy birthday to my brother who just turned 21. So we're gonna celebrate that tonight. We had mimosas this morning. I had like three, so it's slightly affected me because I had, did not eat breakfast, but I think I'll be okay. I'm not sure if it's more on brand for Tinder God to be a lightweight or if it's more on brand for Tinder God to be able to just put it away. But I'm like, I'm like 50 50. You know, it, it varies for me, it seems. So keep getting your bets in, everybody. Let's go back and take a look at the list for those of you that don't want to look at my ugly mug anymore. This is what really matters the game. Andre, what's up? Decisive game five. The dials are being set right now as we speak. So those of you that don't have any credits right now, typically if you bet all your credits and lost, you bet all your credits and lost. Or if you've never really watched our stream before, you just have to stick around and watch for a bit, you'll start to get some credits. If any of you have been around for a while and been watching in the background and still have no credits and did not lose it in a bet, please let me know. I can help you with that. That's sometimes Streamlabs has an issue. But there are some names that I see pop up in the chat that I've never seen before, so I genuinely do not know. <laughs> it's good to have you here, though. Thanks for tuning in. I know, FO and Salvage, I'm getting a little sick of it. I think people need to be a little bit more creative with the pairings, but it's uh, it's it's strong. So if, if I want to win, Andre, I'm going to keep doing that pairing myself, but it'd be nice to see. I mean, Empire's great Salvage carrier. I think Republic is not bad. Uh, and we're good. They will be, we do not have a dice cam, because again, we are. I'm not in Chicago, so we will be seeing them roll right in front of us here on the mat. Or not, but doesn't matter. There's the rolls. All right, so first player is going to be, uh, looks like Sevwal. So we do have some, some, we have some overlap here in the list. We've got some fours. The fours will be overlapping. We've got Kaz and Vanessa, which I'm going to move Vanessa up on our overlay here. Oh, just over Zay. That's the rough spot. The salvage placement is not favorable for uh, resistance. Looks like they're going to be able to get one. Kaz cannot slam. Well, uh, you're not allowed to slam. You can't cloak while you have salvage. You can't barrel roll, you can't boost. 
not being able to reposition is hard. We'll just say that. The Rivendell Lego set looks nice, dude. I'm going to be getting that shortly. I'm going to be getting it for the 50% off discount because I'm spoiled by the connections I still have at Lego, at least for the time being. I will uh, keep you all posted once I get it, start building it. I need to clear a, a big space in my bookshelf for that, that set, though. I want it, precious. We must have it. It almost had like German Gollum. And we got backdraft just doing a little scooch one straight. Barrel roll back. Phasma barrel roll. So I would imagine backdraft's going to take to salvage next turn. And Vanessa going real fast. Four straight. I would imagine you boost and then you do the same maneuver next turn. Get that bottom right salvage. My, my mantra here with salvage is if you can... Oh, let me start the timer too. Sorry, guys. Uh, how much time do they have left? 73 minutes. Haha. -ha. I caught myself early this time. Boom. One, two, 73. Boom. There it is. Um, if you can just hold on to two crates, you're usually okay. But you got to keep pace, right? Got to... You gotta be engaging and getting some kills, not not losing too much on your end, like most games, I'd say, in 2.5. And we got a cloak there. But you cannot stay cloaked while you have salvage. So just a Yeah, I'm not sure where Kaz is going, but maybe Charles thinks he can cloak while taking the salvage, or he just wants to avoid the joust, but be there at the same time. But those are... That's a scary four... Group of four over there. Gotta take a lock. Is, is there a jamming effect out there? I mean, there's jamming beam. There's no false transponder, apparently. That's... Huh. Uh, yeah, I don't think Savall cares, though. But yeah, he could be trying to bait. I mean, you don't... The fireball with a cloak, it's like, oh, wow. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's really who cares. I like this potential flank that Lulo has. Gonna boost straight. So all of a sudden Charles is putting himself in a spot where he could take three crates. And there's no shots at the top of the board here. Almost looks like a 2.0 game from long ago. Man, I will RIP NW Vader Day. We had a good run. It was fun to just like grab a few cards and just play a simple game of X-Wing. We're going to roll for the decloak here with cloaking device. Oh. And then I think you failed the decloak, so you keep the token. Is another works. Although you might still clear the decloak. You just fail it to the left, I think. Fails it to the left, so you keep the token. Kind of silly how that... I feel like card probably needs to be errated. I think the intent is that you have to lose the cloak, the token, but it says or decloak or lose the cloak token. It should really just be like you just lose the cloak token if you roll the eyeball. But alas, that is not how this works. I mean, chance engagement is like the most like 2.0. Let's be real. It's literally supposed to be like 2.0. Turn down the music on my end because it is a really loud. Turn it up for you guys.
All right, so this is a big turn for obvious reasons. The first engagement is always big, but this is where we see crates get taken. This is where we see Kaz with a cloak go somewhere. This is where we see Finn try to get in position to maybe take, you know, trade some good shots. And then, of course, the two SFs in the middle. How aggressive do we get? Do the SFs have a five straight? They do, right? They can go five straight, or is it just a four? That's the fastest they can go. I don't see why you would want to go that fast with Phasma, but if you can, you can. Hey, Scott, my guy. Thank you so much, dude. I am blessed with another raid from Hexile. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much, man. How are you doing, dude? How is life for you? Are you gonna be at um? Are you gonna be at Worlds by any chance? Love to to say hey and catch up, maybe, or otherwise I'll have to do it another way. <laughs> Not at Worlds. Oh, I'm big sad, man. I'm finding out a lot of people that I thought would be there aren't gonna be there, so I guess I have to add your name to the list. <laughs> But I'll meet you eventually in person, man, I'm sure. Thank you again for the support, dude. It really means a lot. Trying to make do with the, uh, the gaming laptop here in California. So that's why we don't have a dice cam, if you're wondering. We usually do. When I, when my desktop. There's a decloak. Kaz is going. He's going straight. Too straight there. And next up, we have Finn. Finn is going to take the salvage, no doubt about it. Next range one. They're halfway through the token there. He's got it. I'm going to grab that crate. Touch crate. Touched. Consider it touched. He's the mini crispy. That's terrifying. I don't know if I want, ever want to play against that wall if that's the case. Seems like a nice guy though, and uh, hey, I'll gladly get my ass beat by nice guys. I'm told that they finish first. All right, so there's that crate token, kind of that fun little box being placed on Finn to mark. Oh, didn't go that fast here, so not gonna be in range. Gonna just focus. Kind of daring Sevwal to go fast and. And we also get a turn in here. We don't see the four straight. So it's going to be Lulo that would probably take the. But Lulo just really doesn't want to take the. Mm. Lulo really doesn't want to take that crate. And what, while you, I don't even think you can attempt to boost while you have a crate. Even though it would automatically fail. I don't think you can like link to fail to get a stress on purpose. That's good. We need more humble, just good dudes, right? We have plenty, but you can never have too many good dudes. Send dudes, as they say. Not nudes, but send dudes. Send good dudes. <laughs> Top four decibels, not bad. I would say that's quite decent, if you ask me. Speaking of someone who didn't make Top four decibel, and also has never played in a online event of that size. <laughs> Ethionic making an appearance too. What's up, Daniel? Phasma is great paired up with Quick Draw. I will say that. Hey, Hobbs1339. Thank you for the follow. That's 810 followers for the channel now. It's nice to. We've broken through the ceiling and we're at 810. That's awesome. Thank you for watching. Yeah, that's what I thought. So Lulo is just like doesn't want the crate. Just in general, just like, I just I don't want this. <laughs> I'm not interested. We got 40 people watching thanks to the raid from Hexiled. See, I think it's I think I have an exclamation point Hexiled, which it's like you all came from Hexiled, but I yeah I just want to make sure that my, that command still works. It's still there. So if you want to go back and check out where you just came from, you can. All 
right, and the crates are beginning to get touched. Backtrap with the one bank. A little formation there with the SFs. Special Forces Gunner is free, right? It's kind of... I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest, but, you know, you don't see SFs all over the place. It's not, like, the biggest deal, but another crate's going to get taken here. So, two to one right now. Everyone's favorite salvage mission. We love it. Dandy cheering for Order 66, therefore I must cheer for CFIS. I have no choice. Five point SFs? No, not another four points. Is it for, oh, is it five points for Special Forces Gunner? I thought it was free for some reason. I don't know, man. In a world where Impervium plating is free, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I just forget this stuff because I don't play FO ever. Yeah, Kaz could be on the flank, though. That's true. But he still could get lit up. There's still a couple shots that be, might be coming in. Oh, Lulo's tempted. Lulo is... Oh, no. Lulo taking the crates. Lulo. About to get real awkward. Velvet Buddha in here. Dropping the emotes for his team here. So just trying to keep pace. It's two to two with the crates that are taken. That middle crate still out there. It's still there. Don't love the no boost. Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh no. That's not good. Malaris takes the lock. We're gonna have another range one shot. This is from Gaelic, who has a tractor beam. And Gaelic takes a focus. All right, so Malaris flips the charge. Uh, Kaz is in a position to get hurt. Let's just say. But first... Lulo, range three, no mods. And Natty hit crit. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And it goes through. We get some sort of ping. We ping something. It doesn't go through because Phasma exists, so the crit doesn't go through. That's why you take Phasma, though, is because you just negate the crits. You're like, I'm not going to take that crit. I'm good. So uh, Backdraft takes the shield. And here we go with the, uh, I think we're just doing a primary here. Yeah, primary for sure. Oh, that's gonna be two hits and a crit. Kaz, what do you get Kaz? Kaz takes a crit. Can he do anything about that? No, he cannot. So the crit is going to be a structural damage. Kaz, it was nice knowing you, I'm sure. So he's actually down to four hold because the overlay doesn't update for the automatic damage card that you start with. So Kaz, not feeling so hot right now. And that's going to be hit crit. Kaz gets one less now. Hoping for some paint, maybe? You don't get all the paint. You're taking another crit. Spend your focus. And another crit goes through on Kaz. It is a double structural damage. Not sure he shuffled the deck. It should be shuffled automatically, but... Uh, 
Yikes. Okay. So double structural with three hole left. I think that's that might turn off his ability. Yeah, and Bucket can't even you can't even repair that it's structural, so Bucket. Yep, fireballs be fireballing. Not good. This is a bad start here for for resistance. So who you got? Range one. You got Malaris. They both have the tokens. They ever the mods rather. That's true. Kaz could hide for a while. Not sure the choice was. I think he's taking Gaelic. I'm not sure. I can't. I was not paying the best attention. That's only two. And you roll all the paint. Screw you, Kaz, apparently. You'd have to flip over a damage card, right? To, uh, I mean, if you wanted to shoot that turret, but yes, he could get right behind the SFs. You reach out, and you got range three obstructed onto Phasma. So we could uh, end up with Backdrop taking all the shields here. And you spend the focus. That's going to be three hits. This is from Vanessa Doza. And it all goes through. Sorry, Phasma, you got to take two. Them's the rules. And another shield down on Backdrop. So, interesting. Phasma shot back. You got Lulo. Uh-oh. Lulo's not stressed, though. So Lulo does get four dice. This is unmodded, but then again, let's see what TTS says about the unmodded shot. Because sometimes unmodded attack dice are just good. 50% right? chance per die on getting a hit. And yeah, that just is so annoying. Oh, super good. So two hits and a crit. Charles is saying, well, F me here. Can you roll three of aids? This is into Lulo. Lulo rolls two of aids and the crate is going to go down. I don't think you have elusive or anything. Let's take a look at the overlay on my other screen. So shield goes down, the crate comes off. Again, if you all are wondering, like, oh, stop moving around. Everything's happening on one computer right now for me, right? So just trying my best over here. Shield down on Lulo, shield upgrade drops off. But hey, here's here's the bright side, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this as a glass half full take. Ready? Lulo never wanted the crate. Sure, you really want the second crate, but never wanted it. If I'd want to play test a version on tabletop, a deck building game. It's for what? What is the, what's the, what's the game? Yeah, so here's the bright side for, uh... oh, we still got, oh, no, you don't have a shot on Phasma, though. Okay, so you can take the shot onto Scorch. I'll get to my hot take, or my, my bright side half glasses half full take in a second here. I don't, I'm getting distracted. And Scorch is going to take a shield. No shield upgrade on Scorch means that he's a little bit easier to kill. So two to one. Uh, that was, as I said, an important engagement. And it ended up being pretty big. Uh, Kaz, thankfully in a decent position, right? As you mentioned in the chat, to run away. To come behind the SFs and maybe do some work before he goes down. He's only worth four points. Um, in regards to playtesting your game, it sounds really cool. Um, I 
I really just don't have a lot of time these days, so I just can't really commit to to uh, anything unless it's kind of one of those pretty casual, very flexible, has a long have a long time to help kind of thing. So I'll be I'll I'll level with you and be a hundred percent honest. I can I never commit to things that I can't a hundred percent follow through with because I don't want to be that guy, you know. Yeah, good targeting. As I, so, glasses half full take. Lulo never wanted the crate. Now you have three ships that converge on two SFs who have already taken two damage each. You can knock off a crate. You could get a kill, and then you could leave it up to Sevwal to try to make do with just four FOs. Granted, they're pretty decent FOs, but you know Malrus has already spent a charge. Scorch is always going to be stressed so he can't be the most maneuverable once he's stressed uh and dt being strained can really matter when it comes to the lower initiative ships like finn yeah i, I mean i and i appreciate you asking i i'm definitely not saying no i just want to give you the heads up that like i if you're trying to find like a, you know avid play testers who are gonna like play testing it's important to dedicate a lot of time to making sure you're properly playtesting. I just don't think I can provide that, like at the level that I used to with FFG when I playtested some X-Wing product. But yeah. But thank you. Um, and I'm, I'm, if there are other ways I can support your game, you let me know. I want to help you all. Okay. So, here's the deal, folks. I don't think it's necessarily as bad as it looks for Charles right now, but... If I'm Sevwal, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, despite taking that early damage with the SFs, the FOs did some work onto Kaz. Kaz has got to run away for a bit. Finn is about to be in the teeth of it all with a crate as well. So if Sevwal can keep two to three crates and knock off the remaining one from Charles, it's going gonna, it's gonna to build a gap. So Charles needs to close it by killing the SFs. And that's where we're at. Anyways, back to the my expert level commentary. I'm getting really good at this. I just want you all to be jealous of how great I am at commentating for this game because I'm just so freaking good at it. I know, right? It's corporate Zoom call, Nick. <laughs> it's such a good point. It's like, so everybody, uh, this is welcome to the stand up. We're going to talk about our different projects and process, circle back on a few things and make sure that our vendors are satisfied, all right? Something like that. Just the jargon that you hear on Zoom calls. Yeah, totally. Send it to me. Feel free. Yeah, at a high level. Evergreen. My company likes to use evergreen. I hate it. I'm like, I, I'm a video producer. I'm not going to use these terms. Like, ugh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Just nasty. So I will say that um, our, we're at 33 subs right now. Uh, and if we can somehow find a way to, to hit 50 in, you know, the coming a few weeks i will be giving away a set a full set of metal objective tokens so just want to throw that out there i think that top down view here that center objective is still for the taking but scorch might come in maybe he can come in with a two bank and swoop it i think he might still be a little too far away and I also not sure if you want to give up your broadside to Finn. Finn might just do a one straight. The bank might take you a little too far out, but the one straight is also right in front of the rock. So I'm not sure he's going to have room to carve out the next turn if he does that. So we're heading into turn three here in a moment with 49 minutes and 22 seconds left on the player's clock, which is the official clock. I am about 20 seconds behind because I'm really good at this. Finn, Finn, likes, he, Finn can handle 2v1, but yes, any more than that, um, not great, Bob. Said Kaz, I think Kaz could even do a three hard here. It looks like that would fit. Let's take a look. 
Uh, maybe not. No, I don't know. I don't think it would fit over Gaelic. Okay, it's time for the road roll. Big turn here, Charles. This is the comeback tour for Charles. This round is going to show what kind of flame Charles has brought with this squad. Can he punch back and say, hey, buddy, just because he hurt Kaz doesn't mean I'm out of this fight, you bastard. There's a, is that a two? He did a bank, a two bank and takes the two focuses. Oh, boy. I mean, man, if the seven crashes in, it's going to be tough. And Rafaru, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to 312 Squadron. If you, if some of y'all are not familiar with us, I am, uh, I have worked with GSP for three years. We're based in Chicago. This is our stream that we do on our own. And we got the boost. Okay, interesting. This is just kind of a block. Can we take a focus? Vanessa does have barrage rockets. Close the wings, though, looks like. Chicka goat. That's, that's, yes, that's the place. Sweet home Chicago. Barrel rolling? Oh. What? Oh. What's up, Jamawa? So we got a barrel roll in front of the rock here. And here comes Kaz. And you definitely slam and you explosion with wing or you explosion with wings, you advance slam the focus. He has less damage cards than the initiative of these I-4s as well. There's the slam. And you can take that stress. Focus roll is pretty good with barrage, but at what cost, dude? Like, my goodness, that's a big rock. Explosion with wings time. You can only flip over the one damage card that's face down, and I swear, if it's a blinded pilot or a weapons failure, I'm going to feel so bad for Charles. I please knock on wood, knock on wood. Oh, I think he got to pick the card, so he should be okay, actually. It's probably a disabled power regulator. It is. Yeah, there it is. So he's going to be ionized, um, but in a decent spot to be ionized, right? Like right behind people. It's not too bad. Yes, exactly. Like Michael Jackson. Jamawa. 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 It's this one time Matt Carey and I were doing commentary together. And we just decided to start. Just, just did that and it has stuck. So, All right. So I'm going to add disabled power regulator to our overlay here on the back end. Okay, is it time for, it's Sevwal time. Time for Sevwal to, and he three banks, look at that. That's still gonna be a range one shot, probably unobstructed, but you got, unfortunately, you got your wings closed. Backdraft bumps. So Kaz, Smelling some backdraft here. Scorch does come down. And you are close enough to grab that crate. You could touch it and have three of them. He's taking a focus. If you touch crate, Finn probably pu punishes you. Let me check on Bullseye with Finn real quick. Looks like it's just out. Finn doesn't marksmanship. That's why I, I uh, mentioned it. 
yeah, you gotta take the focus. Finn is like, oh, okay. Um, I don't hate this right now. I'm already thinking about next engagement. This is gonna be crazy. Yep. And then, can you fit the focus boost straight? I think you can. If you want to, though, with Phasma having that rear arc on you. Just take the focus. And then you fail the boost to the left, I believe, is the call. Lulo does have marksmanship. Matters slightly less. I mean, it still matters. Slightly less on the non-crate carrier, right? In terms of you just nothing to knock off, but still crits or crits. Trying to get a kill here. It's important too. And we still have Malrus and Gaelic to go, the I-5s. But Lulo is... Oh, Lulo is going to boost straight. Wants to range one, however, is about to trade shots, or at least get shot by Phasma. Uh, it, would be, it would be three on two at the back. They lock on from Gaelic on the, is there a purpose for that? Can Gaelic do something with that lock? I can't remember, probably. Is destroyed, you may perform uh, coordinate even while stressed. While you coordinate, you should be chosen to perform action only if that action is also in your action box, okay. Malaris. Takes a lock. It's gonna it's gonna do that. Try that Magpulse Warhead. Finn hoping for some paints to roll out of that. Oh yeah, that's right. There is codes. Good point. Biohexacrypt codes. So second Malaris charge is spent. So this is it for Mal. Becomes a more normal TIE fighter now. So here we go with Lula first, because Charles is first player. Four dice on to backdraft, has four hit points left, has a focus. You're hoping for some serious paint here. Knock on wood. Let's see what we get if you're Charles, if you're hoping for. And not bad. That's going to be one going through no matter what here. You use marksmanship. You didn't have to spend your focus, which is good. You wish you had Predator. And that sucks. So they, uh, t that's the SFs. If they, when they do that, they will never die. So just a shield down. Backdraft, rolling the natties. Gaelic, you got a shot, range three, obstructed into Zay. This attractor beam. Re rolling with the lock, slightly better. And, oof. Gets tractored. Thankfully, you can't move her backwards, <laughs> but you can barrel roll her. If you do barrel roll her, though, you you probably don't want to do that, because if you barrel roll her, then she does the stress rotate to get the range one shot. Here's the Magpulse Warhead shot. Three dice onto Finn and Malrus. That's going to be two hits and a crit. So it will hit unless Finn add, is able to add the result to get out of it. He can't. So there's nothing he can do. And he takes a jam and a deplete. And loses the crate. So no crates on Charles' side anymore. 
That's the probably the worst roll. He wishes he had optics or something, but the eyeball blank is the, the worst roll he could have. So he loses his shield, he loses his crate. Yeah, Subwall has been rolling well, pretty, pretty, uh, but supposedly you're not really supposed to mention dice because people get butthurt about it, so. But nonetheless, the crate is knocked off of Finn, so that's good for Subwall because that means that there are no crate, no, no squaring opportunities from objectives for Charles here. There's. Order 66 here in a decent spot to pull ahead, but we have more shots in the backdraft here. This is Kaz, who rolls all paint, spends the focus from the advanced slam action. And uh, backdraft continuing to just roll all paint. Uh, takes just one, so two hole left. Now you've got an opportunity. He doesn't have a focus anymore. Uh, you could fire the barrage rocket. It would be three on three. I think you do. And boom, that's gonna be three. You spend the focus. Backdraft needs to continue to roll like a god. He dies. So that's, that's some points for Charles. That's four points and that's a big gun off the board too. That rear arc, big gun. So down goes BD. But we are trading at an I-4, so he will take his shot before he goes down. So, Epi, the game has gotten to the point where it's how, it's a damage race, so how, how many times are you able to double mod your shots? And if you don't double mod it, can you, can you roll extra dice? But especially in salvage, like RNG with dice is so big because of the crits. So it just it is what it is. People might not like the fact that it's a part of the game that we talk about, but it, it is what it is. Some people are more fortunate or less fortunate than others. It's too early to tell. Uh, I don't think Charles's dice have actually been that bad, to be honest. I just think he's rolled a little bit more average. So that's just one. Uh, you could roll out of this. Zay. Has an opportunity to doesn't so takes one. That's the first shield on Zay. Zay a good four point T seventy. More shots. Going into the tractor Zay. It's three dice out the back here, three on one. You have a focus. Can we see a blank result be rolled? And there it is. I called it. Zay still takes the damage. So she uh, one shield left by my count. And absolutely nothing for Scorch. And technically, folks, that crate marker will, will be removed from Finn. He has dropped his crate. So. DT takes a strain. He has a shot somewhere. I guess it must be in Suze. You definitely shoot a DT if you're Finn. I mean, absolutely. He is depleted, though. So. It is range three, so Zay gets two dice. DT a four, I think DT is a four. I, I four, yeah. Here's the shot. My gosh, and that's gonna be two hits and a crit. Zay would love to roll and evade here. Doesn't, it all goes through. Shield hit crit. Direct hit, Zay down to just one. Not dead yet. My goodness. Finn is going to be the last one to shoot. Actually, Zay gets to take a shot, but not going to because Blacktrap's been deleted. So Zay would have been able to take a shot. Finn, 
You've got a one die shot into DT. You're depleted. Oh, add the eyeball. It's got to be two. That's got to be two. You wish it was a crit? Takes the strain. And takes one. DT. Shield down. There is still a Magpulse Warhead out there. Malaris, which... It's going to just be annoying again for Finn, but... Seval gets up to... Four points. Backdraft was worth four, so it's going to be a five to four game. So, a small lead for the, t for the, for the resistance right now. We got two ships that are suffering. Kaz is ionized. So we know where he's going next turn. Gonna probably do a one bank. And then the, the, the FOs are gonna close in. Scorch probably doing a two hard. Vanessa Doza, though, is just in an awful spot because Lulo is in the way right now. I have spoken. I have spoken. I gotta say, y'all, I'm not spoiling anything, but the second episode of The Mandalorian was way better than the first one. It's because Rick Famuyiwa is not the director of the second one. He is not a good director. I do not like his stuff. Where'd the chat go? Show me the chat. There it is. All right, so we've got 31 minutes left in this game. Charles needs to kill Phasma and just see where he can go from there. Thanks for all, all the fish. You're welcome, Shiv. I got you, dude. I hope that spoiler was was uh, just the best spoiler ever. Man, when if, when I uh, when Endgame got spoiled for me, that was a bummer. I was like, oh, I kind of care about that one. That's not great. Darth Vader is not Luke's father. It's all a sham. Phasma is a trap, but Phasma's worth four points. Phasma's got a crate. Does Charles have R4 on? Yeah. So do you like, uh, two hard still sits you on the rock, I think. And even then, like, if it does clear, if you want, you, you hope that Phasma moves before you. I don't really know what you do. Today, Versio probably just does a 4K. Well, Phasma can't pass off damage if there's nobody nearby. However, it looks like there's going to be some ships nearby, so... So you have Scorch down a shield. You've got Borch down a shield. Borch also has a crate, so you could go after... I'd imagine Finn's going to one bank down. However, Malrus is going to be right there in his face for another uh, double modded Magpulse Warhead. However, Finn could roll out of the Magpulse if he doesn't roll Eyeball Blank. It's 
a good point. It's a good point, Andre. You make a good point. Compelling point. Almost ready to go here. Let's see. Take a look at our dials. Looks like it. We're about good to go. Uh, Vanessa. Vanessa needs to be there to do some damage. But what are you doing, Vanessa? If he stayed there, he just fires the barrage. I, I don't know. Uh, that was just odd. I don't know. Yeah, I think it is Malrus. Gambit key I'd put up there, but I don't, it's not, Gambit is not particularly that close to Malrus. Gambit's, a, the support opportunities are off the charts, though. So there's the double Foki. The first player is Charles, which just blows for Vanessa Doza, and Zay is going to just come around and go down the board, take a focus. So now you're wondering, like, maybe Lulo and Finn could kill Scorch? Going to just barrel roll to get some extra rate distance away. It is the ion maneuver. Does the bank dial that in? Clears the stress, clears the ion, can only take a focus and is gonna bucket it. So there it is. One less damage on Kaz. Let's go, Kaz. Double structural Kaz, but gets, a, gets one back here. A supporting actor goes to Gamut Key. What an upset! What an upset! Gambit Key! What? Who would have thought? Did Vanessa not hit the... Oh my gosh, Vanessa didn't hit the rock. Yeah, show me that template, man. I'm curious. I guess so, yeah. So it clears, and then what do you do? Do you just take a lock on Phasma for later? I know you say you can't kill Phasma, but you can try to do something. Gorsh. Focus roll back. If Phasma just hard turns down, though, that's kind of... He is going to do it, though. Yeah. Trying to get that crate for next turn, but I don't know if the too hard gets you close enough to, to get it. Not sure. Oh, that's right. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Vanessa's just gonna shoot out the back. Y'all are right. Y'all are right. I don't. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I don't see Vanessa really get played much. Shocker, right? But yeah, uh, confess. Phasma gonna. She's gonna take an evade with pattern. Evade rotate, and then uh, proud tradition of focus. Ooh. Scorch focuses. I think the two hard still clears from Lulo, though. <laughs> hey, Netty Games, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the 312 crew based in Chicago. But I'm here in California doing our mobile stream right now on my gaming laptop. Oh, it does bump. That is unfortunate. However, you've got a range one shot onto Borch, and Borch has a crate. So, you take the red focus. And you could still potentially kill Scorch because of the barrage rocket and the Kaz shot. So it's, it's a thing that ha could happen. I hate that combo so much. It's pretty good, right? I know. 
Gaelic still has to go. Just so many ships. Gaelic, too hard. Taking a focus, and then Malrus. Gaelic doesn't have a... It's, he just has a primary two-dice gun. He can tractor. And if you tractor Kaz, he'll probably die because he'll have zero agility. But let's get this range one-shot banger out of the way here. Lulo, four dice into DT798, who has taken a shield, has a crate. You don't go into Phasma. She's got Focus Evade. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you dare do it. Don't do it. One ship you can kill, one ship you can't. I just, it's, I don't. Mm, he's shooting at Phasma. Wow. Doesn't make any sense. I can't pretend to understand. Three hits. Phasma should, oh yeah, only be rolling two. And she just rolls, oh my God. I don't understand. Phasma has taken her last shield. Finn is at range one of Mel. I think you can still fire the Magpuls if you want. Yeah, I mean, sure. Finn has a follow-up shot. If score, if, if Borch takes a strain, I just, I, 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 I don't know. Um, maybe you're hoping that you two has gotten a Vade or a Focus Fed there on defense for the Barrage Rocket shot, but, uh, I don't know. Uh, Malris gonna spend a lock. Makes it three. Finn, what does Finn get this time? Was this a mag pulse? It was not. Finn! Hey, Finn! Takes the strain, adds the, uh, eyeball, spends the focus. He's safe. Now it's time for the tractor beam shot into Kaz. Kaz just wants to kill something on his way out. You have to make a trade here. Oh, he's just doing a primary. Kaz gets one agility here. Two hits. So many dice all over the place. I told them to roll at the bottom of the board and they decided to neglect that, but that's fine. It's their game, I'm just here to watch. So Kaz takes another damage, so he's back down to three. Who do you go for here? DT could be dead. I mean, you want to knock off the crate, so. I do think you go range two obstruct into DT. It's three on four. I think you expect Kaz to die. So you need to trade out some points. It's gonna go into Scorch. Splitting up fire here, I'm a little confused, but Charles knows what he's doing in almost every case. So he rolls just Natty, three hits into Scorch. Scorch is going to have to spend the focus, takes one. Now, Vanessa could fire a barrage rocket. Don't shoot into Phasma. Don't do it. Range three barrage rocket. That's what she can do, though, right? Oh, treat the requirement as one to two. You can't. Never mind. You have to go into Phasma. I apologize. Can't do it. So she's got nothing. So it's going to be Phasma into Lulo. Lulo doesn't have any mods. It's just it's three on two. Phasma's got the focus. And just more paint. Just It's been all paint. Lulo taking the last two shields. But still, still sticking around and until DT probably kills Lulo. Lulo really wants you to shot at DT. I'm just saying. 
that that's probably gonna do it lulo dies and that's probably well let's see that's four more points so up to eight now bad turn for the resistance real 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 bad here we go range two shot into Kaz. it's got you gain the stress three dice unmodded let's see what you get here three on one another kill opportunity you could just go for zay but i think you you go into kaz and you roll two Kaz takes one, two. Kaz takes two. Like somebody kill me. Oof. Can Finn kill DT, I guess? You got range one, so it's three dice. DT strained. Uh, I'm sure Andre, I mean, to keep Kaz alive for one more turn, but you can get initiative killed by Gaelic or by uh, Malaris, so I don't know. I don't know. Here's Finn's shot. Nice. So you take the strain, you make it four. DT has just two. It, do we get the Natty of Aids here? Let's see what we get. Nope, the opposite. So down goes DT. That's three more points, so it's eight to eight before the salvage is counted, which it would be, I think, nine to eight because one of the crates goes down. I think Lulo's still out there for some reason when Lulo is dead. Yeah, Lulo's dead. And we get the crate drop. The Scorch is at two hole. That's another three points potentially you could get. Phasma is at three. However, you have the T70s facing kind of the wrong way. I think you might have Venisa do a two hard up. That barrage rocket could be a big deal. Could be what keeps Charles in this game after losing Lulo. And being one away from losing both Zay and Kaz. Kaz is no longer going to get his ability, though. That's where they drop the crate at the top there. Yep, you just got to shoot Kaz once. So eight to nine now. Is removed, deleted. Goodbye, Lulo. The shot into Phasma was the one that really surprised me with Lulo. Try and trying to understand like what I mean. I guess you're hoping you get Phasma to spend the focus, but that's playing pretty defensively. Whereas Sevwal has been playing quite aggressively, and it's paid off. Uh, it's a close game, but he's got you know he's he's spread the damage out and done a lot of it at the same time. So as we've mentioned, Kaz just needs to get shot at by one of these I fives. Should be enough to kill.
Vanessa hasn't taken any damage. Yeah, so I think Charles wants to move last because Phasma, the ro the turret rotate will be a big deal. Kaz also no longer gets any green dice. So he's pretty much a goner here. You have to be real wicked with how you fly him. Zay does not have uh, R4, so he could do a two bank or a three straight. Still debating on Phasma's dial. Not sure what to do with Kaz. Oh my. Finn also. Double strains. That's not nothing. I mean. Phasma could just turn all in on Finn. Get a nice kill there with Malrus from behind. Charles is playing with fire right now. Well, he's down he's down a shield already, Michael, so I think you could kill him. Especially when you got a four dice gun. I think you can kill him. Let's see. It's not your priority, but he's there. Uh, is Malin threatening? I mean, she's still a, a god out there. Full health. I don't know. Yeah, but here's the thing, Nick. Look at where the resistance ships are. It doesn't look like that matters as much right now. They just they are all scattered, and you got the best. The best chance is at the bottom of the board, facing the wrong way right now. All right, here we go. So round five, with ten minutes left. And it is unfortunately going to be Charles moving first. Scorch cannot turn around. He is stressed. Finn, but a clear strain. Take the two focuses, I would imagine. That's true. Finn is a Finn is an X factor here for Charles if he can. I think the one bank is gonna. Ooh, the one bank should clear for Phasma. Yep. Zay, do you boost? Oh, you just focus. Does that mean you're gonna run into. Oh, you do the barrel roll to the outside of the board. Yeah, there it is. I was gonna say. Don't wanna be in the way of Vanessa Doza. Kaz, you slam. I think you have to. Thing is, even like just, oh, just it's just all bad. I just don't know where you go. Because if if Gala can't catch you, Mal will. 
and that's assuming that Phasma doesn't catch you either. St structural damages are just awful. Poor Kaz. You do the slam. Here we go. Slam and enchantment. Three straight. Take the advanced slam focus. Yeah, you take the focus because if you get a green die, I guess, yeah, sure, <laughs> right? Vanessa, too hard. R4 makes it blue. I think you have to. Do you do the focus roll? I think so. Yeah, here we go. The focus roll towards the rock. You go all the way back. If Scorch. I think even a two big for Scorch is out of arc, but we'll, we'll see. Scorch. Yep, Scorch does have one damage card. Players just asking about damage update. Scorch has two hole left, has one damage card. Gaelic and Malrus are untouched. Oh! Let's take a look at this firing arc. Oh, yeah, you definitely got it. Pardon me for zooming around. But you got a chance to kill Zay. So, and here is that one bank from Phasma. Four dice into Finn. He's strained already. You can focus, rotate, and the target lock to kill Kaz. I gotta focus. Really unsure what to do here. Target lock, okay. Yep, that should be enough. I would be very surprised. That would be catastrophic failure of the dice, considering Kaz gets literally just need one hit. And you'll have another shot. Malrus will have a shot as well. So here's the deal. Finn needs to kill Phasma. Zay, or uh, Vanessa needs to kill Scorch. He's gonna take a crate. And Zay needs to live. This is all assuming that Kaz dies. A death, Kaz's death would make it 13 points. Killing Phasma would bring Charles up to 12. Killing Scorch would bring Charles up to 15. And then it would be one salvage. It would be a 15 to, uh, was it 15 to 14 game? No, 15 to 15. Because Gaelic takes a crate as well. All right. Gaelic. Made target priority, I don't know. I guess not. I'm not sure that shot was in the cast to kill, I assume. Roll 
rolls nothing. That's not gonna kill Kaz just yet. It's gonna be Phasma to do it. Vanessa, Barrage Rockets, range two. Scorch has a focus, so here's what you need. You need three hits and you need a couple blanks from Scorch. There's the Barrage Rocket spend. Here's the roll. A little lag. There's three, that's the three you need. Scorch will be alive on one. That's what you needed. You needed to kill Scorch there. Not gonna do it. FO continuing the, the paint parade. It's, I think you expect an eyeball blank and an evade there, I think, on most rolls, so not you know, not crazy. But Scorch has been staying alive. Alright. Here is Phasma's shot rolling green dice by accident. Uh, double tap three dice at the back again. All you need is one. There it is. Bye bye. He had a lock, anyways. I mean, geez, there's just no way. So that's four more points 13 to eight. Scorch going for Zay gains the stress. Three on three. Zay gets a reroll. See if he remembers it. If it comes up there's a blank optics though doesn't matter optics coming into play here three hits zay needs the paint what kind of t70 are you zay can you stay alive there it is paint spends the focus not dead yet not dead yet Yeah, so mathematically, I still don't think there's any way, because you kill Phasma. They still have more time, technically. Do you go... I think you still... You have to kill this the crate carrier, right? They have to hurry this up, though. This is the last shot. Will they have enough time to play one more round? In the Phasma. Three dice. Oh, you got 40 seconds left. You got to go. You got to go. Come on. Roll your dice. Oh, my God. Roll your dice. <laughs> You've got 30 seconds. 27, 25 seconds. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be it. There's been a too, it's taking too long to roll the dice. Here's the dice roll. Oh. You added the strain. Make it three. And this is going to be game. Yep, that is GG's. Phasma takes two and survives. Just couldn't. Man, it's just so hard to kill these things. So the final score, it's going to be 16 to 8. Scorch on one, Phasma on one. So it would have been another seven points. It would have been 15 points for Charles, assuming he got those kills, but he could not. It would have been 15 to 15. He needed to kill Scorch, and he needed to kill Phasma. Yes, we could do pairings. We'll do pairings. I told the stream that we would do it, so we could still do it for sure. Let me pay out the bets here. So GG's Order 66 is 2-0. Oh, after a couple of nail-biting game fives here. Wild stuff. So the right side takes the dub. The team to beat for now. But let's see how big their egos get. Can they inflate their heads even bigger? Well, that remains to be seen. Just GG's to both players here. Let's go to Zoom Call Nick. It does look like I have a Zoom, I'm on a Zoom call with you guys.